Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 20. Our first question today is a basic arithmetic question that looks at decimals and also involves a little bit of algebra. So algebra is really important for the GED. I'd say about 45 or 55 percent of questions are going to involve you doing some sort of algebra um, you know, function. So make sure that you're really strong with your algebra. Okay, so the problem says a plumber cut an 80 meter long pipe into these three pieces. What is the length of the remaining piece? Okay, so if you look at the question and the diagram, essentially um, the pipe is cut into three pieces and they give you the length of two of those pieces and they want you to find the remaining piece. All right, so the first part of the question involves you adding decimals. And just quick reminder, adding decimals is like adding whole numbers, but you have to remember to align your decimal points. That means that when you add two numbers that have decimals like this, you would make sure that those decimal points are aligned with each other, okay, like that. And then all you have to do is go ahead and add those two numbers, okay? So that would be 4.8. So that's part one of the problem. So these three pieces of tube are going to uh, equal 80 meters. So you would uh, set up your equation like that. And we already did the first part, adding those two decimal uh, numbers. So you get 4.8 plus x is equal to 8. All right, and this is the part that requires you to have a little bit of algebra knowledge. OK, so what you have to do here is you want to isolate that x because it's the remaining piece. So in order to do that, what you would do is that you would subtract 4.8 from the left side of the equation. And remember, in algebra, you always have to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. So you would also subtract 4.8 from the right side. And the reason that we're doing that is because now on the left side, we can go ahead and cancel these two numbers out, OK, because 4.8 minus 4.8 is 0. And that gives us x is equal to 3.2, which is answer B. Uh, excuse me. OK, so question 2 is an applied arithmetic problem, and it involves bar graphs. It says, in 2018, what was the ratio of sunny days to rainy days? So before doing this problem, let's quickly remind ourselves how we read these sort of graphs. First thing, um, make sure you re read the legend. OK, so the legend here is um, these little squares that are telling you what the different colors of the graph represent. OK, so usually um, there the legend is actually found in the top right of the graph. But in this case, I, I put it up here. And it's telling you that the blue bars on the graph represent sunny days and the green bars represent rainy days. Then you're going to look at your y-axis, which represents number of days. So you can see that it goes from 0 days to 40, 80 days, and 120 days. And finally, you're going to look at your x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, which represents the number of years. So essentially, this um, graph is showing you how many sunny days and rainy days they had in the year 2018, in the year 2019, and the year 2020. OK, so if we go back to the question, it says in the year in 2018. OK, so that's the first thing. Let's look at uh, 2018. So if we look at our x axis, it's that first uh, two bars. So we can in literally ignore the rest of the graph. We don't need it. Um, and the second part says, what is the ratio of sunny days to rainy days? OK, so meaning um, how many rainy days were compared to, to, excuse me, sunny days compared to rainy days. So if you remember from the legend, the blue represented sunny days, OK, 120, and the green represented rainy days, 40. So your ratio would be 120 to 40. Usually what happens um, in the GED is that they actually want you to go ahead and take another step, which is to reduce this ratio further. So in this case, what you would do is divide both sides by 40. OK, so 40 by divided by 40 is 1, and 120 divided by 40 is 3. So your ratio would be 3 to 1, which is answer A. 
Question three is an algebra problem. And again, I can't stress enough how important it is for you to be really familiar with algebra because it affects a lot of problems, even geometry. So uh, really, really, um, you know, work, work with these problems a lot during your preparation. Okay, so it's asked you to solve a 6x plus 20 more than 2 plus 2, 12x. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do, um, and sometimes people get bogged down with that more than um, symbol, just ignore it. I imagine it's an equal symbol, okay? So it doesn't like affect anything of, of what you're going to do. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to get your x's on one side and you want to get your whole numbers on another side. So we are going to get all our x's on the right side. Okay, so in order to do that, you if you look at this left side of the equation, you would subtract minus 6 uh, from the left side. Oh god, I gave you the answer, sorry. Uh, you would <laughs> subtract minus 6 from the left side, okay, and you would do the same thing on the right side. The reason we're doing this, again, as we said before, if you have minus 6 plus 6, that gives you 0, so you can cancel that out. Okay, so now you have 20 is more than 2 plus 6x. All right, next step is that we want to get that 2 on the right side. We want to move it on to the left side. So how do we do that? Well, we would subtract 2 from the right side. And remember, we have to do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so we have a minus 2 plus 20. Or you could say 20 minus 2 is the same thing. Okay, so now we can go ahead and cross that those 2s on the right side, and then we end up with 18 is more than 6x. And now all we have to do is divide both sides of that uh, uh, equation by 6, okay? Which would give us um, x3 is more than x. So the correct answer is A. Question 4 is another algebra problem. All right. Jim, Abby, and Matt raised $1,350 for a fundraiser. Abby raised two times as much as Jim, and Matt raised $50 more than Jim. How much did Matt raise? Okay, so this is a problem that, um, you know, sometimes they word problems kind of in a tricky fashion. And what you have to do, the trick, <laughs> is to really stay calm and take it step by step. Okay, so we don't know how much anybody raised, so we're going to say that Jim raised um, X amount because we don't know how much that is. And then in the question, it tells us that uh, Matt raised $50 more than Jim. Okay, so Matt raised X plus $50. And then it says that Abby raised two times as much as Jim. So Abby raised 2X. And together, these three people raised $1,350. So you would set up your equation like this. Okay, 2x, which represents Abby, plus x, which represents how much Jim earned, plus x plus 50, which represents max, okay, is equal to uh, 1,350, okay, which is the total. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so now you go ahead and solve for this. So first step, get all your x's together. So um, you would add those up, and that gives you 4x plus 50, and now, now all you have to do um, is uh, isolate that x. So we would uh, subtract 50 from the left side, and we would also do that on the right side. Uh, now we can go ahead and cancel those x's on the left side, and that gives us 4x is equal to 1300. And now in order to uh, isolate that x on your left side, that 4x, we would have to divide both sides by 4. All right, the reason we're doing this is because on the left side, 4x divided by 4 is going to give us 1, um, or x, so x is equal to 325. All right, note that the question uh, asks you how much did Matt raise, okay? So there's another step here. So we found out that x was 325, but we said that Max earned uh, x, which was the amount that Jim earned, plus $50, okay? So now all you have to do is add that 325 plus 50, which gives you um, 375, which is answer A. 
Our final question is a geometry question. A chef wants to cover the surface area of an ice cream sphere, which I give you here, with chocolate fudge. How many square centimeters of chocolate are needed to cover the ice cream sphere? All right, so um, with the geometry, uh, remember that they actually give you all the formulas that you need, so you don't have to memorize anything. But you do have to be familiar with these problems so that you don't miss um, out on, on points that could be uh, easy. All right, so the first thing uh, that we have to do is figure out our diameter and our radius. And uh, our diameter would be 10, and the radius is half of the diameter, so it would be 5. And then if you look at the formula sheet that they give you, uh, the surface area of a, a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So all you have to do now is take that value for the radius that you have, which is 5, and plug it into your equation. So the surface area will be 4 pi, and then 5 multiplied by 5 squared. Okay, so remember when you're doing uh, your order of operations, the first thing that we do is um, things in parentheses followed by exponents. Okay, so the first thing that we would do is, uh, you know, figure out that 5 square. So 5 square means uh, 5 times 5, so 5 times 5 is 25, and then 25 times 4 is going to be 100. So your surface area is 100 pi, which is answer C. All right, folks. Well, I hope you found that useful. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Have a terrific day and stay positive and stay strong. Have a good one.